Yeah, uh, preaching the last of a uh, uh, series that I started on the heart and uh, talking about, the again, uh, uh, who we are inside, not this uh, uh, blood-pumping organ that we have. But uh, we're reading a passage, and I'll read that same text passage out of Proverbs uh, that uh, has sort of been this my lead-in passage. And uh, then I want to go over a couple of those things, and then we'll be in Philippians chapter 2 this morning. And that's where I had you to turn. But Proverbs chapter 4 uh, is where I will begin. And uh, I'm going to read out of Proverbs 4 and verse 23. And it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips, but far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. And uh, the phrase and the passage uh, in uh, verse of scripture that I've been using was keep thy heart with all diligence. Verse 23, for out of it are the issues of life. And uh, again, this is the fourth in the series. I preached on the wicked heart. And uh, the wicked heart had to do with uh, the sinful heart that uh, every man has and we need to be saved. And first and foremost, and like I said, we probably could have made quite a lengthy list out of these uh, things thinking about our heart, but I preached on the thankful heart. Uh, it was sort of the right time before Thanksgiving and uh, uh, preached on that and preached on the thankful heart. I preached on the broken heart last week. Uh, many people deal with a broken heart and uh, the problems that come with that. And this morning, uh, with the Lord's help, I want to preach on the servant's heart the servant's heart, because I think we all need that. And I think and I hope that we desire to have a servant's heart. Let us ask the Lord uh, to bless his word today and uh, to bless the sermon. May we go to him in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the day, thankful for the time that we can gather. Father, we just again ask that you might uh, bless uh, now the uh, preaching and teaching of your word. I pray for the class in the back that, again, uh, those young folks will understand and uh, learn more about you this day. Father, I ask that you might help me to preach. I pray that you might uh, fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, just help me to uh, communicate clearly those things that you've laid upon my heart. Father, I pray that it might be a blessing to each and every one that's here. And that, Father, we can, uh, again, uh, find ourselves all uh, desiring to have a heart of a servant. And Lord, uh, we pray that we'll serve you to the best we can. Bless the sermon and Lord, bless the word to our hearts and the time we have together, and we commit it all unto you, and we ask these things all in Jesus' name. Amen. But uh, as that uh, we come and we consider uh, the servant's heart and consider what uh, what it takes to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and again, uh, it doesn't take anything special. It uh, takes us being willing, and we'll uh, discuss that. But as believers, hopefully we have a, a desire to, to have a servant's heart. And by that meaning that we want to uh, serve the Lord, we want to do it in the way, and we're going to look at a particular passage of Scripture, and that's where I'm going to take my uh, pattern for that from, and we could probably uh, expand that a lot more this morning if we wanted to, but I'm going to be looking at a, a few certain things this morning that I think are qualities of having a servant's heart. And again, hopefully it's our desire that if we've uh, been saved and that the Lord has uh, taken us from uh, the, the miry uh, pit and has put our feet upon a solid rock and has established our goings that we hopefully in our lives want to serve him with what he's given to us and give back to him in whatever capacity that is and just live for him. And I think that it's uh, it should be a desire of each and every believer uh, that the Lord would, uh, uh, would use us and that we could just serve him with what he has given to us. And the most precious thing really that we have to give back to the Lord is our time and abilities and what he has given us, what he's blessed us with and how we can serve him in this world. And uh, then uh, uh, really till, uh, uh, till the time comes, as we sang about a few minutes ago, when we all get to heaven and until that point, till that time that God calls us home, may we be found faithful serving him. You know, there were several in scripture that were called servants and this may not be an uh, exhaustive list it was several I found but just to give you an idea some of these may be called servants in more than one place but Moses was referred to as a servant of God in first chronicles chapter 6 and verse 49 
The prophet Elijah was considered a servant of God. You'll find that in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 36. The three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, were called servants of God. And you'll find that in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 26. Daniel the prophet, uh, in that very same book, in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 20, was called a servant of God. The apostle Paul, uh, many times in the New Testament, in the, uh, in the introductions to his books, uh, he would call himself a servant, uh, not taking on any higher uh, calling. He had many, uh, maybe other titles and credentials he could have gave out, and he called himself a servant. And you can find at least one place in Acts chapter 27 and verse 23, James. Uh, and James is sort of interesting, just being in the forefront of his book that he writes. James chapter one and verse one, he refers to him as a servant. Remember that James and Jude were half brothers to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he found himself bowing in service to the Lord Jesus Christ and finding and calling on him as savior and that being his uh, earthly half brother. Uh, sort of interesting when you consider the background of those two. And uh, matter of fact, their book's sort of small, uh, but very pointed in how to live. Matter of fact, I think James, uh, uh, had you got to hear him in life, uh, what, a, what a thundering preacher he probably was. And Jude, we only have a one chapter book from him, but again, what he gives out, prophecy, uh, just uh, condemnation of sin and judgment. And uh, I mean, he just sort of pours it on for that one little chapter. Always enjoyed the book of Jude. But uh, again, uh, two, two men that uh, uh, we probably don't have as much from scripture about, but they became servants of God. And again, uh, they were related to him to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a place that was in their life. Now, I had you turn to the book of Philippians and we're gonna look at the example that was given to us. Because uh, again, if we think of, well, how do we become a servant? And when we think of uh, somebody who's a servant, uh, it's something that may have left some of our uh, maybe modern uh, world that we have. I mean, back in the day, uh, that some of the Bible times, the different things, they may have had those that truly uh, they did, they served and, uh, and that's what they did. And uh, you'll see those uh, different illustrations in scripture uh, throughout that. And it's just part of their job, what they had. And we can consider some of the qualities maybe they had. And again, this won't be an exhaustive list, but I thought, well, we'll pull out some qualities that are mentioned in scripture because then we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ took upon him the form of a servant. And we find some qualities there. And I thought, well, that's a good place to start for you and I to find out how we can have a servant's heart and what's required there. So we're gonna read about Jesus as a servant in Philippians chapter two. And we'll begin in verse five. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And I didn't have it in my notes, but I'm gonna go ahead and read verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And, um, and we could actually go on. It talks about every tongue confessing but someday, no matter who they are, uh, just as a side note this morning, every knee will bow. And if you read in verse 11, every tongue will confess, no matter who they are. Someday they'll bow. Hopefully they bow their hearts in this world. And again, that goes back to that first heart we preached on, the wicked heart. And hopefully they bow to the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him in this world. But what we see in this passage, we see about the fact that Jesus, as he came, I mean, again, he left his place in heaven. He came to this earth. Matter of fact, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll cross that particular event, uh, preaching on Christmas and the great themes concerning that and uh, concerning the, the birth of Christ and the incarnation. And literally God became flesh. He became man. And he took upon himself, again, as it says here, the form of a servant in the likeness of men. He, again, left the Godhead that he might become uh, man, that he might do that in order to provide and be obedient unto death, the death of the cross. And of course, we know uh, that again, that's what uh, paid the price 
for mankind's salvation. He purchased our uh, redemption on the cross of Calvary with his sinless and perfect uh, shed blood that he would give on the cross and completing all the righteous demands that God would have and therefore saving mankind. But at the same time, when we read this, we find within it some qualities that Jesus had. And I mentioned that he took upon himself uh, the form of a servant. And again, I understand it speaks of his, his mind and his humanity. Uh, but that word's there, and I'm gonna use that this morning, that we see Jesus as a servant. And we're gonna take some things from that that again, I hope will be a, an encouragement to us of how you and I, can have a servant's heart this morning. But Jesus is a servant. And just to give you one example of how he humbled himself, and we won't turn and read that passage this morning, but in John chapter 13 and verses four and five and the other gospels record uh, some of those events that took place there. But Jesus took a moment when he washed his disciples' feet. And that was something that was often done by uh, the servants of a household, especially if it was a wealthier household. And they had those that when people came in, some of the customs that the Jews had because of the sandals and the traveling war, and that they would wash those feet. And it was uh, probably considered a humbling thing. And that's exactly what Jesus did. But he would bow down. And uh, you may remember Peter had some dialogue with him and said, uh, not just my feet, but, but wash me all. And uh, again, Jesus uh, went on and talked with him concerning that. But Jesus would humble himself and wash his disciples' feet showing that he was not, uh, uh, not coming to be above them, but he came to be like them. And he came to be like all that he might uh, end up going to the cross of Calvary. And what a place that was. But we see Jesus as a servant and we see just a little bit of his life. And again, his humility. And we find in that verse. And that's where we're gonna start this morning. As we begin to look at the qualities of, of a servant. If you want to have a servant's heart, I think that, uh, again, we could probably make a little longer of a list, but I've got four things this morning that I think, again, uh, define a, a, a servant. And I think that we can find some of them here because it was saying the same things of the Lord Jesus Christ when he became a servant and when he took upon himself the form of a servant, that these qualities were said about him and that we can find them in his earthly life. And therefore, I think what an example he was that surely that's where we start this morning. And so if you and I want to have a, a servant's heart, and again, I hope that that's a desire to say, Lord, here am I. What would you have me to do? What would you have me? And how would you have me to serve you? And again, I hope for what he has done for us. And again, redeeming us, saving us, that again, our desire would be that we would want to serve him. But the qualities of a servant, and we begin with that, that first one, as we were just saying about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And we begin with humility because that's, uh, that's the first place. And I think that a servant uh, has to come to a place of being humble. And uh, we'll find a couple of passages concerning uh, believers and their humility and exactly uh, uh, how that they, they should act. I'm going to go back to the book of Proverbs and uh, read one verse to you in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 19. And there's much about pride in the book of Proverbs, which is the opposite of humility. But in verse 19 to chapter 16, better is to be of him of a better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And Solomon would write those words of wisdom. James, as we had uh, made reference to him uh, being the uh, half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ is very uh, pointed preaching in his book. But in James chapter four and verse six, he says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let the laughter be turned to mourning in your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And here we find that uh, again, the way to, to rise up in service to God is to find ourselves low uh, in the place of man and realizing that when we come before the Lord, we're truly nothing without him. 
that truly, uh, that without the grace of God expressed upon our lives and shared uh, by God to, toward us and uh, his favor uh, being enacted upon us, you and I really had no hope. Matter of fact, we had no uh, promise of heaven, no way that we could forgive our own sins, no way that we could offset those. And yet Jesus came uh, loving us. God the Father loved us, gave his son Jesus. Jesus loving us and going to the cross of Calvary, paying our sin debt. And he doing that in a humble fashion, not um, again, just dying a horrible death and all that would take place on the cross of Calvary. But it spoke of his humility. And the first place that we find ourselves as a quality that a servant would have would be humility, coming to a place, putting pride out of our hearts and saying, Lord, here am I. What would you have me to do? As uh, the great prophet Isaiah would once say. First Peter chapter five. And uh, again, Peter writes concerning uh, some of these same qualities. And he says um, in chapter five and verse nine, he says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. <coughs> excuse me, him resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Again, Peter speaking of humility, saying that God exalts the humble and he lifts them up. If we again want to have a servant's heart, it begins with the first point of humility. Pardon me there. Uh, the, the heat this time of year is uh, tough on my voice. Uh, but humility is the first quality of a servant. Secondly, uh, to be obedient. Uh, and you would think, well, that's just uh, sort of elementary. And yes, it is. And as we read in Philippians, it was one of those things that Christ had. He was oh, obedient to the plan of God, obedient to the cross. And he would go and perform those things. And we find some scriptures that, uh, that speaks of how that we should uh, have a heart of obedience. And, and truly, the book of Acts tells us in chapter 5 and verse uh, 29 that it's better that we would follow God. And it says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we are to obey God rather than men. And uh, again, our obedience starts with obeying the Father and obeying the Lord Jesus Christ and his word and what he would have us to do. Even in the Old Testament, Joshua, as he gave his uh, farewell uh, unto the children of Israel, and as he, uh, we see it as the close of his book, but actually the close of his life. And uh, and as he's giving uh, uh, the final address that he will give, Joshua chapter 24 and verse 23, he says, Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Now they said that to Joshua. Unfortunately, they didn't do as great of a job of it uh, going forward. But that's the heart that they should have had and that they should have had that desire. They should have kept that desire, I guess we might should say. I think they had it at that point. And they said that we will serve God and we will follow him. First Samuel chapter 15, as uh, Samuel speaks unto Saul and he writes unto him concerning obedience in First Samuel 15 and verse 22. And Samuel said, hath the Lord as great... And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? And that was a question he asked. He said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken to the fat of rams for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because the Lord hath rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. And of course, that was the bad news to Saul because Saul again had put other things in front of serving the Lord. And he had found that. And the uh, the message from the Lord by Samuel was that rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And again, he mentions those things. And Saul was not allowed to continue as king and the Lord would take that from him. <coughs> Samuel would deliver that message to him. It is better to obey than sacrifice. 
And so obedience is important. And so if you and I are going to have the qualities of a good servant, <coughs> then we are going to have to start with humility and obedience. Thirdly, this morning, we will find that the servant will be faithful. And that only stands to reason that if he's going to be a good servant, uh, that he's going to start out being humble. He's going to do what's asked of him. He's going to be obedient following those directions. Uh, but again, the humility, the spirit of that, but he's going to be faithful in that. A good servant is going to do those things that he's asked of and that he is going to follow in faithfulness. We find in Colossians, uh, not too far away from where we started this morning, uh, after Philippians, we find in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 22, and it says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. We hopefully find ourselves being faithful to God, being humble, being obedient, being faithful, uh, serving him as he would have us to. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 tells us that whatever we find to do, we are to do with all our might and uh, put forth our best effort uh, in serving God. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 6, just a few pages back in your Bible, in chapter 6 and verse 6, it says, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. And that qualifies us as servants of God. And that qualifies us to have a servant's heart is because if we want to do the will of God from our heart, may we find ourselves being faithful in what he would have us to do. And so we've looked at three qualities, humility, obedience, faithfulness, and the last one is giving. And giving, and by that, one of the great qualities I think of a servant is his willingness to give and giving of himself, giving of what God has given him. And matter of fact, the most precious part of that is the life and the very time that he's given to us, that we give back to the Lord in service. And we give him actually whatever he requires because God has given so much to us. Acts chapter 20 and verse 35 uh, is again, we find some of the encounters of Paul. He says, I have showed you all things, how so laboring you are to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And again, uh, as Jesus would speak those words, because there's joy and blessing that comes in that. And again, uh, coming from giving what we uh, really, as uh, one missionary said, what we cannot keep to gain those things that we cannot lose. And uh, what, a, what a thought that is, that if you and I would serve the Lord and have a servant's heart, that again, that expression of giving of our lives and giving of our service. And it's what we find in the examples of the New Testament. It's what we find in the examples of the apostles and in the example that was set forth by our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5, when speaking of the church at Corinth and their corrections of what they did, and it said, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. And so it speaks to that church because, again, uh, it wasn't just a matter of maybe the service and the things they were going to do, but it said that they first gave their own selves to the Lord. What a quality that is. If you and I are going to have the servant's heart that we would desire to have, it starts by giving and basically, again, surrendering to God and his will, saying, Lord, here am I. Whatever you would have me to do, that's what I want to do. And I give you uh, my all. And that's where we find the essence of a servant's heart. Because if you and I want to have that, these qualities, I think, among maybe others that we could find, but I think that these uh, stand out. And again, they're the ones that our Lord had when it said he became a servant. He was humble. He was obedient. He found himself faithful to all the word of God, all that was said about that was needing to be done. And he gave. He gave of those things that he had. He left all in heaven. He came to this earth and he gave all that he had literally unto man and dying in our place on the cross of Calvary. What an example he was to us. And now because we are uh, in the kingdom of God and we've been born again and we're children of the king, may we desire to have a servant's heart that we might serve him and that we might give back as he would have us to. And that uh, I hope would be a desire that really every believer would find. 
And they would find themselves having that desire, saying, this is what I want in my life. I want to serve the Lord because he did so much for me. Jesus said in uh, John chapter 12 and verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. And so Jesus mentions those that would follow him and those that would serve him. And uh, again, what a, what a quality. I think all the disciples, those that he chose, uh, the 12 uh, that would follow him, save Judas, who Judas would, uh, uh, would betray him and go away from those things. But the other 11, uh, they had uh, times of, of lack of faithfulness and lack of following. And uh, again, they weren't uh, all with him when he would, uh, even at the most intense moments of his life, when he would go to Calvary, Peter would follow afar off. We at least find John at the foot of the cross, but the others uh, hiding away. And so they had their moments but they would come back after that, after Jesus would appear to him after the resurrection. And those men, uh, as the Bible tells us, would uh, or not the Bible, but I guess history and the things we know about them, they would literally turn the world upside down for Christ. Many of them given their lives uh, to serve him and to go as he would call them to go. And so, uh, so may, may we desire in the pattern of those who went before us, and not just even going back to the early church, but countless others through the ages who have followed that and gave their life to have a servant's heart. May that be our motivation and just our desire because of what God has done for us. May we desire to have a servant's heart and to serve him. In chapter uh, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, the Bible says, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus gave again all that he had. He gave his life on the cross of Calvary. May you and I, because we've benefited from that and we've benefited in ways again that we cannot do ourselves by his grace that we were saved by faith in what the finished work on the cross of Calvary and his shed blood, our sins forgiven. Nothing we could have done to have measured that ourselves, to have taken care of that ourselves. Now may we give back in the same manner that he gave to us by giving all that we have, and that's our very life, having a servant's heart that we might serve him. And it comes with these qualities, humility, obedience, faithfulness, giving of all that we have to give. I close today with a, a poem I found, and uh, this lady was writing, you may remember in the in the scriptures and the writing concerning Mary and Martha, and you may remember as the Lord came and uh, Martha was out serving and then Mary uh, just wanted to be with Jesus. And she wrote concerning with that. And it says, occupied for or with Jesus. I thought it was pretty good. But it said, Martha in the kitchen serving with her hands, occupied for Jesus with her pots and pans, loving him yet fervored, burdened to the brim, careful, troubled Martha, occupied for him. Mary on the footstool, eyes upon her Lord, occupied with Jesus, drinking in his word. This the one thing needful, all else strangely dim, loving, resting, married, occupied with him. So may we, like Mary, choose the better part, resting in his presence, hands and feet and heart, drinking in his wisdom, strengthened with his grace, waiting for the summons, eyes upon his face. When it comes, we're ready, spirit, will, and nerve, Mary's heart to worship, Martha's hands to serve. This the rightful order, as our lamps we trim, occupied with Jesus, then occupied for him. May you and I this morning be occupied with Jesus, that we can go out and serve him as he would have us to. A servant's heart, do you have that this morning? Is it qualities you possess? I pray we desire to have them. May we work on them as scripture would mandate. May we go out with a servant's heart. The world needs us. The Lord's left us here. May we serve him as he would have us to. Let us stand with our heads bowed as we have a time of invitation and we close our...